something really exciting that happened, I think it was yesterday, uh, they actually released it, is Figure 53, which is a company out of Baltimore, Maryland, uh, that makes the program QLab updated to QLab 4. And it's really exciting. I use QLab a lot. A lot of people I work with use QLab. We use it for video. We use it for audio. Uh, now it does lights. They've got a really cool uh, YouTube trailer about it that I'll, uh, I'll link down below. And it's a, it's a pretty good intro video for a new product. And just first look, I, I've just downloaded it, just started playing with it. So this is not a, a review or any sort of... Uh, real opinion, but just first look, the things that I'm seeing that are good and bad and the things that people are talking about uh, that I've seen online so far, um, a couple of awesome features. Uh, there's now a cart feature in QLab, so you can add sounds or cues to a cart and have either a single button or trigger those cues in uh, like a typical cart player style, which is a really nice feature. That's that's really awesome. Uh, custom cue templates, to be able to drop cues into a template that's got the settings I need for a specific job or uh, whatever the case may be, that's really exciting. Uh, to be able to record cue sequences, to be able to teach QLab essentially how you wanted to do something by just doing it, uh, will save a lot of people a lot of time, I'm sure, in the future. So that's exciting. Can't wait to play with that. Uh, you can import files from GoButton, which is their iPad app that acts like a cart player. And that's actually a really cool feature because uh, just recently I've had uh, clients come with their iPads uh, two events to corporate events with a go button playlist already you know put together of walk-in music or stingers and things like that and that's really cool but I don't always want to operate off of an iPad let alone their iPad uh, you know you get now honestly you get used to touch to unlock an iPad the touch ID and then when you get somebody else's iPad you don't really know uh, where things are you got to you know write down their passcode it's a whole thing and if I could just uh, import their go button uh, playlist, their deck into my QLab on a laptop or an iMac. That'd be really cool. So that's kind of that's kind of neat. Didn't expect that. Um, uh, Fancy paste, which is a really cool name um, for a feature, and some batch editing of the basic uh, different parameters uh, in your cues and different properties. That will make things so much faster, depending on how it's actually implemented. Definitely going to play around with that, but something like uh, taking a show from uh, one venue to another, dealing with different projectors, different screens, different surfaces, all that kind of stuff, uh, to be able to batch process some of that stuff or batch process like audio routing um, as you change interfaces from one place to another, whatever the case may be, that that's going to be really exciting. Um, and now it does lights. Not something I'll probably end up using it forever, uh, but definitely going to be really helpful to uh, theaters, I, I assume, uh, houses of worship, things like that, where it's an all-in-one package, uh, everybody's uh, on the same production uh, kind of thing, and trying to get the most out of, out of the gear. That could be extremely helpful to be able to do direct DMX uh, right out of QLab. Very, very cool feature. Uh, the couple of things that seem like they might be kind of a nagging point, but, you know, we'll see. The license is now account-based from what I understand, so when you get an activation, uh, it's now based off of your account as opposed to you just you know, went to their website before and put in your credit card and you download the file and you drag that into the session and it was, it was really easy and specifically what it was easy for is when if I was on a job or another operator was on a job and we needed a license for that day for whatever feature, there's been times in the past where as an operator you need a license for a machine or for multiple machines, but you're not the one paying for it, you're not the one dealing with it there on site, and what happens is either uh, the job lead or another technician or somebody back at the office or even the client uh, or the production manager, somebody else though pays for that license and then uh, you know, you sends you the file and you put it into the session on the, on the job site and off you go. Well, if you've got to actually sign into QLab with some credentials to activate it now, I can see that becoming kind of an issue with, uh, multiple machines on a job site 
and you know people not wanting to give their credentials out I, I'd, I'd be interested to see how that's handled i'm not judging it yet because i haven't played with it but i could i'd be really interested to see how that works uh if it's not your personal uh account on the machines which a lot of times it's it's generally not the one cool thing about the licenses I, that i've read is that if you're renting if you're buying rental licenses uh, they will now accrue towards purchasing a license. So it's kind of like a rent-to-own program, which, again, it would be really interesting to see. I need to read more on that and see how that breaks down, if it's a multi-machine, multi-use license or a single-use license with a backup or whatever it is. Uh, that's cool. I mean, anything, you know, we buy rental licenses constantly. I buy them. Companies I work for buy them. So, yeah, sure, if it... If that goes towards having a, a real license in the future, can't see how that would be bad. I understand that that's why they need to have an account-based system so they can track that. So it'll just be interesting to see how the licenses work, if it's still a file that you can send or you have to physically log in. So we'll check that out. And uh, in the next you know few days, coming weeks, I'm going to play with QLab uh, 4 a lot. I'm going to try some stuff out on it and see what it does differently. It, it looks really good, but until you really dig into it and find if there's any quirks or anything, uh, you know, buried, it, it's such a powerful program. You can't really just look at it and say, oh, it's better. Oh, it's worse. Uh, I, I feel like you really got to dig into it and try to use it. And I'm going to do that and I'll get back with uh, maybe a little review of, uh, of the changes and how they work out in the real world. So that's the QLab 4 update. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Awesome figure 53. Hometown guys up in Baltimore, they're just killing it. I, I can't say enough good stuff about them because it's been free for so long. It's, you know, the amount of times I've used it on shows for free or for like $3, uh, they're, they're doing great stuff. So no complaints here. QLab is great. Thanks for watching. That's it for today, and I uh, hope to see you next time. More videos coming real soon, uh, and be sure to head over to Patreon if you want to support the channel. The more support that we get over there, uh, the more I can do these videos and set up uh, interviews and reviews and product teardowns and all that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate any support. Um, like, subscribe, uh, thumbs up, a comment down below, a comment anywhere on social media. Uh, is awesome. It's great to hear people's opinions and what you think about what I'm putting out and what you want me to say in the future, what you need uh, clarification on, and what you want uh, covered in future videos. That's super helpful. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.